I have two young children and it's a challenge uh, to celebrate their birthdays every year because their birthday is important. It's a day to uh, recognize and celebrate their birth and their life and we need to make sure that they enjoy it and that they celebrate. So for each one of them when it's their birthday we continually monitor their happiness. We wake them up and we remind them it's your birthday and we ask them are you happy and when it's time for the party or the dinner we keep asking do you like this party do you like this food do you like this gathering do you like your gifts are you enjoying your birthday uh, because we want to make sure that on this day this special day that they celebrate correctly and I want to talk about this more after today's scripture reading Ezra chapter 6 verses 13 through 22 Then, because of the decree King Darius had sent, Tatanai, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Shethar Bozanai and their associates carried it out with diligence. So the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah a descendant of Edo. They finished building the temple according to the command of the God of Israel and the decree of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. The temple was completed on the third day of the month Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. For the dedication of this house of God, they offered a hundred bulls, two hundred rams, four hundred male lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, twelve male goats, one for each of the tribes of Israel. And they installed the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their groups for the service of God at Jerusalem, according to what is written in the book of Moses. On the fourteenth day of the first month, the exiles celebrated the Passover. The priests and Levites had purified themselves and were all ceremonially clean. The Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the exiles, for their brothers and priests, and for themselves. So the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate it, together with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors, in order to seek the Lord, the God of Israel. For seven days they celebrated with joy the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because the Lord had filled them with joy by changing the attitude of the king of Assyria so that he assisted them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. From today's passage, I just want to take a closer look at verses 15 and 16. The temple was completed on the third day of the month of Adar in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. And then I just want to look at the last verse, verse 22. For seven days they celebrated with joy the festival of unleavened bread because the Lord had filled them with joy by changing the attitude of the king of Assyria so that he assisted them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. This is a huge event for Israel, for the people of God and for God. They completed the work of the temple. They completed the construction. 
And so it was time for them to take note and to celebrate. And it was time for them to have a big, a huge celebration. So the passage tells us they celebrate the Passover and the Passover meal and the festival. And the community takes seven days off. Think about it. Most communities cannot afford for everyone to take seven days off of work. It was very costly. It was very extravagant. And then they had to provide the meals and the celebrations for seven full days. This was a very extravagant celebration. Yet this is what was necessary for this huge celebration and this landmark event of the completion of the Temple of God. I shared earlier how when it's my children's birthday, we want them to celebrate appropriately. And I think most parents, they do not want to raise children who are emotionally depressed, who are emotionally disadvantaged and maimed throughout their lives because of some form of depression. That would bring a great dishonor to the parents. We want to raise children who are emotionally healthy and happy and joyful. And if you think about it, God is our Heavenly Father and we are His children. And yes, when it is time to be solemn, we need to be solemn. When it is time to mourn, we need to mourn. But when it's time to rejoice, when it's time to celebrate, we need to be joyful. We need to do so properly. And it would bring God great dishonor if we could not celebrate when it's time to celebrate and if we could not be joyful when it's time to be joyful. A few weeks ago, I celebrated two large events. Uh, the first one was uh, my father-in-law, my wife's father, his 70th birthday. And in our culture, it is appropriate to take time and to go big for the 70th birthday celebration. And the second uh, event that I celebrated was my 10-year wedding anniversary, just uh, a few weeks ago. And in order to celebrate these two events, I took a lot of time off of work. Uh, my whole family of four traveled very far and we spent a lot of money. But more than we spent a lot of money, we spent a lot of miles. Uh, let me explain. I am not a millionaire, but I used to be a mileage millionaire. And what I mean is I really was serious and intense and committed to collecting airline mileage and hotel miles. And for many years, I very carefully, meticulously managed and collected my airline mileage. I had over a million miles all collectively. And even though I'm not a millionaire with money and dollars, I was a mileage millionaire. And to be honest, I know this is kind of weird and it's probably sinful, but sometimes I would go online and just look at all the miles I accumulated and it would just make me happy. Uh, there was this one website that would show all the different miles from the different airlines and hotels and I would just click on it and look at all the miles I, I accumulated and it just made me happy because I thought of all the trips and hotels that my family could gain out of this. But a few weeks ago, I burned through most of my miles. I spent it all, almost all, because it was time to celebrate. It was time to be extravagant. It was time to make it rain. <laughs> and so we burned through most of our miles. And it was a great blessing to use these miles to celebrate my father-in-law's 70th birthday celebration and for me and, and my wife to recognize our 10-year wedding anniversary. When it's time to celebrate, 
we need to celebrate, especially when it's time to celebrate God's victories and God's accomplishments. And so when we look at our churches, our faith communities, when it's time to celebrate a church anniversary, a mission project, a building project, I think very importantly, when it's time to celebrate a baptism, when we're celebrating salvation, especially for an adult baptism, we need to go all out. We need to be extravagant in the gifts, the events, the meals, the celebrations, the quality of the pictures and video that we take, the quality of the flower bouquets and the gathering and the event planning. When it's time to celebrate God's accomplishments and God's victories, we need to go big and we need to be extravagant. When we look at the Bible, especially the Old Testament, it's full of celebrations, feasts, holy days, which we now call holidays. And God has taught us through His scriptures that when it's time to celebrate, we need to celebrate with the Lord and for the Lord. And I hope that the, uh, God would give us the ability to do so uh, properly. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank You for our salvation. We thank You for our faith. We thank You for our spiritual growth. And we thank You that You've given us many reasons to celebrate and to be joyful and to say hallelujah. And we ask that you would give us a free heart so that we can celebrate appropriately and give you thanks. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.